a song that we all should be able to relate to. That Jesus simply thought we were worth saving. Our sinful nature, our bad behavior, our nasty disposition, skeletons in our closet, sins that we've committed, but yet he thought we were worth saving. So much that he hung and bled on a cross for our sins. See, what I have discovered is that when somebody thinks they have it all together, there's certain songs and words they can't relate to. But for those that are honest and true to themselves, they know that you really, nor me, were worth saving. But because of God's grace and his mercy, he looked past our faults because he thought we were worth saving. Thought we were worth saving. God, we thank you this morning that you loved us so much that you sent your only begotten son. You loved us so much that you allowed him to be a sacrificial lamb for our sins. Jesus, as our elder brother and our savior, you loved us so much. You hung, bled, and died. Didn't say a mumbling word, but you died for us. You took our sins. You took our bad behavior upon your back. You drank that bitter cup. Things that we have done wrong. We're grateful that you thought we were worth saving. God, once more in this preaching moment and this preaching time, God, as always, I'm not knowledgeable enough for this assignment. I'm not intelligent enough for this task. Simply, God, I ask that you allow me to proclaim publicly what you've allowed me to prepare for privately. God, touch my tongue, touch my mouth, that I shall do no harm to thy text. That your word can be heard, that your people would not see me, but see you. In your son Jesus' name, we pray, amen, amen, and amen. We've been in the book of James for this series entitled The Facts of Life. We're going to stay there um, this week and next week to conclude this series. James has been good to us. He's been uh, pointed to us. He showed us and provided us some great information. Amen. In the book of James, we're picking up James chapter number three. Amen. James chapter number three, beginning at verse number one. Amen. James chapter three, beginning at verse number one. Amen. In this series entitled The Facts of Life. So good uh, to see my mother in love here. Amen. Give her a hand of celebration. So good to see your mom sneak in and to see about us. Amen. James chapter three, Beginning at verse number one in this series entitled The Facts of Life. Fact number one for those taking notes. Fact number one, trials and suffering are a part of life and they will come. Fact number two, temptation is dangerous and detrimental to your life. Somebody needs to write those. Let me say it again. Fact number one, trials and suffering are a part of life and they will come. Amen. Temptation. Fact number two, temptation is dangerous and detrimental to your life. Fact number three that we'll give today and this third installment is simply the tongue is dangerous and can cause a lot of trouble. The tongue is dangerous and can cause a lot of trouble. Fact number three, James chapter three, verse number one, we'll read more than we usually read. Reading this morning, I believe from the new uh, Revised Standard Bible, it says, let not many of you become teachers. My brother, knowing that as such, we will incur a stricter judgment as a teacher of the gospel. For we all stumble in many ways. If anyone does not stumble in what he says, he is a perfect man. And we know the only perfect man was Jesus Christ, able to bridle the whole body as well. Now, if we put the bits into the horse's mouth so that they will obey us, we direct their entire body. Look at the ships also, though they are so great and are driven by strong winds and still directed by a very small rudder wherever the inclination of the pilot desires he turns the rudder so also the tongue is a small part of the body and yet it boasts of some great things 
See how great a forest is set aflame by a small fire. And the tongue is a fire, the very world of the world of inequity, iniquity, and the tongue is set among our members as that which defiles the entire body and sets a fire the course of our life and set on fire by hell. This verse right here, I want to get to verse number eight says, but no one can tame the tongue. It is a restless, evil, and full of deadly poison. With it, we bless our Lord, our Father, in one breath, and with another breath, we curse men who have been made in the likeness of God. You may be seated this morning. Fact three in the series entitled The Facts of Life. Fact three, the tongue is dangerous and can cause a lot of trouble. I just want to use for a subject or a thought very briefly this morning. Watch your mouth. Watch your mouth. Watch your mouth. Brothers and my sisters, if you spend any time in a home like mine, then there are certain phrases that you heard when you were growing up. There were certain phrases that you would continually hear over and over again in your adolescent, your teenage, and your child years if you grew up in a house and a family like mine. Yes, I would believe you know the phrases if you grew up in the house. They're, they're familiar, they're stuck, they're etched in your minds because you heard it over and over again. You, you know, let me do a test. Let me do a poll, Corella, and just see who grew up similar to me. You heard some phrases like, shut up before I give you something to cry about. Y'all y'all grew up like I did. Y'all grew up where I did. It, it, you heard uh, 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 some things like, you must think you're grown now. You heard some things like, I brought you in this world. I wish I had the old family here. And I can take you out of the war. You, you, you heard some things like, do you have McDonald's money? Y'all ever remember that one? It, 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 it's those phrases that you heard growing up that, 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 that still are etched in our mind. Y'all remember this one. You must think money grows on. I wish, I wish y'all grew up like I did. Y'all, y'all grew up I did. Y'all remember this one. This one stays in my mind. I still use it today. Uh, you need to go take a shower. You smell like outside. Y'all, y'all ever found out what outside smells like? I don't know, Sister McKenzie, but they would say, you go take a shower. You smell like outside. Y'all remember those? You, you need to say, but, but, but y'all remember this one? It's like that older generation. It's that grandma, granddad generation that would say this one. Go and sit your narrow tail down somewhere. Y'all, 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 y'all act like, y'all act like y'all didn't grow up the way I grew up. Y'all, y'all remember this. I don't care what such and such mama said. I'm not such and such mama. That's what they would say. Those were the phrases that they would say. They they would say, shut the door. You're letting all my AC out. Y'all, my air out. Y'all. Y'all yeah, 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 remember this. Stop running in my house. This one that I believe all of us heard a time or two. A hard head makes for. Y'all remember that, y'all. Y'all remember that. It's, 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 it's like that. Y'all remember. It's usually, I don't know why it is. Sister Richard, I don't know why it is, Raven. But it was usually uh, 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 the daughters that, that, that kind of got this one a little bit more. And some other ones, oh, you starting to smell yourself, y'all. Y'all, y'all. Y'all remember that one. Y'all remember that one, that one, that one. But, but, but it's also, I believe, a preacher, that, that, that the young ladies would hear a couple of more, more than us men. I don't know why it is, Mama. I don't know if you said any of these to Vicky. I don't know. I'm not going back. I'm just telling what I remember growing up. And I believe that, we would, that, that, that everybody heard it, but our young ladies, our daughters, heard some stuff like, I will knock the taste out of your mouth. Y'all ever heard that one? Y'all like the real Don I know you heard it. Amen. I'll knock the taste. But before
before they would say, I'll knock the taste out of your mouth, there'll be something good to see you, Brother Zeph Baker. There would be something that they would say something like, you would say something real smart. Usually it was the ladies. You would say something real smart to your mother, and she would look back at you, point her finger, and say, you better watch your mouth. Because what she was saying is, you're getting dangerous to a line that you don't want to cross. Because if you cross that line, I'll knock the taste out of your mouth. Y'all ever been there? But I believe such is the case for Christians today that God through the book of James is reminding us that we better learn how to watch our mouth. Because it's that mouth that can get us in a whole lot of trouble. It's that mouth that can get God to knock us down. It's that mouth that can get God to whoop us with some strength. We got to learn how to watch our mouth. Because the Bible says, take your garden to the Bible says that there's life and death in the tongue. It, it, it lets us know, Jeremy Forte, that when we talk about the tongue, that we can speak life. But then, Dickie McKenzie, we can speak death. You got to be careful. That, 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 that God may have a blessing, but your mouth can speak death over the blessing that God has for you because you killed it with your potty mouth. Such is the case, Chairman Spencer, in our text today, the book of James. James here in this book begins to give us some good things. James reminds us, Brother Rodney, that God made all things good. But what I've discovered, Minister Shavers, is that while God made all things good, man misuses some good things. Vonda, what it really says to us is that, 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 that everything God made and created is good. It's not that it's good or bad. It's good, but it's all about how you use it. And that's the way the tongue is. The tongue is a good thing when you can speak life into somebody and speak life and tell them it's going to be all right. Speak life and encourage them that God made it for a good thing, but man has turned it into a bad thing. And so James here tells us God made the tongue to be used for good and to encourage men and women. Man used the tongue instead of encouraging for lies, gossip, complaining, criticizing, filthy language, and negativism. God says, I did it for good, but now you're using it for evil. Y'all need help. Let me give you some help. Let, 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 let me help you out. See, I've discovered most of our problems are as a result of our uncontrolled tongue. Maybe you wouldn't have got written up on your job if you had just controlled your tongue. Maybe mama wouldn't have had to pop you in your mouth if you were able to control your tongue. Most of our problems come from our tongue. Y'all need more help. Y'all not getting it. I'm almost out of here, Josh. It's interesting because I went to the doctor a couple of weeks ago. I had a sinus, sinus, y'all know it's this time, President Parker, my sinus is headache, it just got all over me, had a head pounding over, uh, had a headache over my eye, went to the doctor, That's, I discovered something, President, again, every time I go to the doctor, three things happen. The first thing is, they get this little thing, put it on your fingers, F, in order to get your heart rate. After that, while they're getting the heart rate, they begin to put something over your arm to get your blood pressure. I'm used to that. The, the nurse does that. The tech does that. Then the doctor comes in. My doctor comes in. Dr. Antikar comes in. He said, he says, uh, 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 Pastor, what's going on? What, how you feeling? I said, Doc, my head is hurting. And, 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 and I just got a pressure right here in my head over my eye. He says, okay, come on up. Uh, uh, sit right here. Open your mouth and say, ah. I said, Doc, I didn't say I had strep throat. I didn't say my throat was bothering me. Why are you looking at my mouth and my tongue in order to help me with my sinus? He, he says, you got to understand that there may be some things going on, but the tongue is always the indication of what the problem is. Good God Almighty. I said, Doc, what are you saying? He said, when I look at your tongue, I can see what might be going on that I couldn't see otherwise. 
God. And I believe that if we're going through some tough times in life, I've discovered cause that the problem might be our tongue, that our tongue can be an indication of what we're going through in our life. And how can you control the tongue? Can I tell you how I saw that a tongue can be controlled, Sister Monica? Because they beat Jesus all night long. I'm there, Josh. They put a crown of thorns on his head. And the same ones that cried out, Hosanna, cried out, crucify. But Sister Belk, he did not say a mumbling word. And I got to get out of here, y'all. But can't you see him hanging on that cross? But he did not say a mumbling word. Can't you see the soldiers talking about him? But he didn't say a mumbling word. Can't you see? One of the thieves on the cross talking about him, but he didn't say a mumbling word. He died so we could control our tongue. He died so we could get him better life. He died for your sins and mine. With words in his mouth, words on his tongue, he said, I got all power in my hands. I got death and life in my hands. He said, Oh, death, where is thy sleep? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? Aren't you glad he didn't say a mumbling word on the cross? But now that he got up, he declared victory. See you later. May the Lord bless you real good. I think by the time you just watch your mouth. Just look at somebody. Don't you dare touch them. And say, name. Oh, name. Whatever you do, just watch your mouth. Watch your tongue. Won't God lead you in the right direction? When you got your tongue. Because if you don't have control, everything in my head is going in the right direction. See y'all later. May the Lord bless you real good. I got to get out of here. I wish I could celebrate with you today. But will you help me? Will you help me? is about to take you into a new season. Y'all didn't want to do it. Let me encourage you. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy, 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 it comes in the morning. Shout yeah!